remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? 11 UPS employees were arrested in Tucson, Arizona, following a two-year-long investigation by the Department of Homeland Security. Prosecutors have accused the workers of hiding their drugs inside of packages and smuggling them from Mexico to the United States. Mario Barcelo, who has worked for the company for 20 years, is accused of being the ringleader of the operation. In addition to Barcelo, Gary Love, Michael Castro, and Thomas Mendoza, all UPS employees, are charged with money laundering, drug possession, and drug distribution. Seven others were also arrested on charges of shipping drugs and operating stash houses. Who can say they are surprised by this information? What I'm surprised is they didn't include FedEx and the United States Postal Service because you know it's going on. 10 years, they say, this operation was in play. They investigated for two years. Let's see how that works out. 10 years operation, two years investigation. So it's safe to say someone ratted them out. I wonder which one was it. I wonder, do they have the rat in custody? They got some long paper for a long time. Now, something tells me that in order for them to operate that long, they had to have the help of customs employees. They had to have the help of members of law enforcement. No way possible you running a drug ring that long through UPS. I mean, it's obvious they're going back and forth with packages. It's obvious that you're supposed to check those packages, right? It's obvious, but they allow that to happen for 10 years. No, somebody didn't get their cut. Or perhaps you have a jaded lover. Or could have just been the enemy got some intel on them and was like, yo, check that truck. Boom. I know somebody that's over here. Whoa, whoa. So yeah, they definitely got ratted out. But the bigger picture here is they made the cardinal sin. They create, they, 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 um, what I'm trying to say, they committed the cardinal sin of staying in too long. Fast money will do that to you every time because that money is so good. That fast money, boy, that money is a high, man. And making it like this, little work, big pay, oh, man, that money good. But all money ain't good money. Man. So I should say that money good while it's good, but all money ain't good good money. That fast money will get you every time. Now, I can guarantee you almost certainly that those guys who've been involved in that that hustle, I can guarantee, almost guarantee you that most of them, they're going to go to the penitentiary and whatever money they have, they're going to spend it on the lawyers, they're going to spend it on their families, trying to take care of their families while they're inside. And they're going to spend it on themselves buying commissary and stuff like that so that they can live good. If they, if they got any money at all, right? I'm, I'm assuming somebody got to have some money somewhere. But when it comes down to it, when after all of those sentences are passed out and they do their time, the money going to be gone. I can, that money gonna be gone in almost every single case, the money is gone. Now in the beginning, when you go in, if you got long paper, you can get some things done. You still, you're sitting in jail, you know, you're getting things taken care of. But that is a very, very small percentage of, 
uh, of drug dealers who are able to have something long, their paper long enough where, where their money can outlast their sentence. That is very, very few and far between. Almost all dudes who get caught up, they're going to come out of that penitentiary broke. Starting at square one, and all they will have is a bunch of memories and some pictures. Hey, look at me. Look what I used to have. Look what I used to do. This is the life I used to live. The family is going to be gone also. The woman will be gone in almost all cases. I've seen a few women stick around, but those women who did stick around, after the dude got out, I've seen a few of them, the dude get out and get on his feet and get rid of her, the woman who stayed down for another woman. I've seen this happen. Uh, I'm not sure if I, I don't even recall a case where a dude did long time, got out and his, his woman stayed, they stayed together for a long time. Not even in the case of uh, Mendoza, I mean, not Mendoza, I'm tripping, uh, Mandela. Not even in the case of Mandela. His wife was down the whole time, right? But when he got out, they were on, uh, uh, his wife's name was uh, Minnie. They were only together together for like a couple of years or something like that, and, and, and they were gone. They were separated. So uh, a lot of time I think women stay down you know, because they don't want to be looked at as the person that was disloyal. So they'll stay down, but it's so much go in between that, you know, in the interim of that person being sentenced and, and getting out of jail, getting out of penitentiary, so much mistrust, so much talk, uh, confusion. Uh, it's just very, very hard to keep it together. And those people eventually... They, they go their separate ways. That's typically how it goes. So at the end of the day, you got to say to yourself, was it really worth it? Was it really miss, worth missing? I know we, we say we do it for our children, but was it really worth missing your children grow up? Because that's what's going to happen in most cases. Was it really worth being in the penitentiary and, and, and your mom dying? or your father dying, or your grandmother dying who raised you, and you can't get out and go to the funeral? Was it really worth it? Nah, man. People like to talk about the, the shortcut. The shortcut is in the work. No more talk. What the haters talking about? Yeah.